because a lot of people did agree on what you said on cables and sample rates, uh, but some people had some comments about converters and they still said, oh, there's a big difference, you know, on price and what you get. So there was a guy who said, you know, there's a big difference if you run your converters hot or you clip them. That's where you can tell the difference well, but in that's, quality, so to speak. But why would you run a converter into clipping? Yeah, I, I was thinking the same. I, I mean, that seems just <laughs> insane. I mean, really insane. I, I I understand that people will overdrive their preamps for a sound, and they, I guess you can overdrive a converter, or you can overdrive an equalizer, or you can overdrive anything. I used to get a great, great guitar tone by overdriving a wah wah pedal. And you would, you know, the, with the fuzz down first and the wah wah after, and you could just leave the wah wah pedal at various static places, ah, uh, eh, uh, and you know, play for twenty seconds and then change it to e. Eh. And that was a really cool effect. But that's an effect. I mean, if I'm recording cymbals, drums, hand to percussion, uh, cellos, you know, string section, I want it clean as possible. And then later, I, if I want to dirty it up, I could do that with plugins uh, when I can hear the whole mix. Uh, you know, once if you record something with distortion and clipping, and later you decide it's too much, you know, you, you're stuck. You, nothing you can do. Exactly. So, so, so I don't even believe in that. But yeah, I, I could see how different converters or different preamps would sound different when you distort them. Hmm. But they all sound the same, and I mean all of them, even cheap ones to the most expensive. They all sound the same if you don't clip. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, Sound on Sound magazine did a fantastic comparison of mic preamps. It's probably five years ago or so, mm -hmm. uh, where they uh, tested all kinds of preamps from you know forty dollar piece of junk to you know thou many thousand dollars, and nobody could tell. They did listening tests and they measured them all, and mm -hmm. and they were all good. And uh, and I've done comparisons with converters. I have uh, a couple on my website, mm -hmm. and. Uh, the vast majority of people could not tell the difference between a $25 sound blaster and a $2,000 lavery. Exactly. And, 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 and when averaged out, you could say nobody could tell the difference. And I got a lot of emails. I still collect emails. Mm -hmm. And this is all on my website, ethanweiner.com. Just go to the articles page. And there's all kinds of stuff like this. And I, a lot, maybe a quarter of the emails, people would say, I got to admit, I couldn't tell any difference at all. It must be my ears. Or they make some excuse. And I say, no, it's not you. There really is very little difference. The Sound Blaster actually had an extra A to D and D to A pass. And it was a little grittier sounding. So some people could tell that. Right. Uh, but I, mean, the I, I actually ahead. did that test on your website, and I recommend people people check it out. And it, yeah, it's, it's a brilliant test because it's like you said, you know, you might be able to, able to tell there's a difference, but you cannot say this is the expensive one. You know, I think that's where people get maybe tricked because they think, oh, there's a difference that means it's better. You know. But you know, a lot of times they're they're not even hearing a difference. In order to know for sure, first the test has to be blind. It has to be blind. Mm -hmm. If it's yeah. not blind. If you know what you're hearing, then it's not a test. So it has to be blind. I don't think it has to be double blind. If you have a friend that you trust that doesn't look, you're not looking each other in the eye while they do it, uh, you can do a, a single blind test. But you have to be right at least, I think it's five or six times in a row mm. in order to know that you're really hearing it. Because if you've got it three times in a row, it's 30% chance. I forget the numbers. Hmm. Uh, it's, it's, it's a pretty good chance that you just were guessing. I mean, it's like if you get it once, 50-50, you, know, you, know, you get it twice, you know, it's, you know, so you have to, uh, and I wrote an article about, about a year ago, and it's also on my website, I think a link to it, mm -hmm. for one of the audio magazines, uh, for Pro Sound Web, uh, how, how, and it's very detailed, in fact, it was so detailed they had to split it into two, two separate articles a month apart, mm -hmm. and it was, here's how you do a proper blind test, and all the conditions, and how many times you have to be right, and what the percentages are, and, uh, and it's all plain English, there's no math, there's no statistics, kind of math in it it's mm. just uh but it you know it's this is how you do it right. so be, so first you have to prove that you can even hear a difference mm -hmm. that you really you know tell and then you could say well maybe the difference is this one sounded worse F for example a lot of people picked the sound blaster card as sounding best because like i said it was a little more gritty had a little edge to it a little bit like analog tape would have or you know or a something and so they said oh that sounds a little clearer it's got a little more b bite to it that must be the better one and no in fact it was the one with you know with, with a little distortion yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's funny but first you have to prove that you can really even hear a difference and uh, you know i have uh, you know i besides uh, talking 
to uh, uh, audio recording type people. I, I'm also active in Facebook groups and mm -hmm. for, for hi-fi audio file people. Yeah, yeah. The, the big deal with, with them, they're not recording, so they don't need analog to digital converters, but they are always talking about uh, DACs, DACs, mm -hmm. you know, digital and analog park, you know, when they're streaming their music or playing it. And, you know, and you get lots of people saying, oh, you know, you got to spend a thousand dollars, whatever. And uh, so, um, yeah. so I'm always, oh, so, so I point out, I bought a $30 media player. Um, I don't have it right here in front of me. It's, it's this big. It's the size of a book of matches. It costs $30. It's SanDisk, the people that make thumb drives. Mm -hmm. SanDisk Clip Jam, it's called. It costs $30. And I measured. It's got a DAC in it. It's a media player. It's got 8 gigs of RAM. You load up your WAV files or MP3s. It can do uh, 24, uh, 96 kilohertz mm -hmm. or 24 bits. I don't know if it does 96 kilohertz. Anyways, so I actually measured its distortion and frequency response at 16 um, – uh, 24 bits, 44.1 kilohertz. Mm -hmm. And it was all, you know, better than 100 dB down. The distortion was like 0.000. The right. frequency right. response was ruler flat from, you know, below, well below 10 hertz to well past 20 kilo, you know. And so when people say you got to spend hundreds of dollars on a DAC, no, th this $30 media, the DAC in this $30 media player is good enough to be what's called transparent, meaning you can't hear a degradation. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. So. It's crazy, man. 